Just three missions left, ladies and gentlemen. Next up is Mission 24, Crash Landing, known in Dark Conflict as... Inside Pulsatrix. We're back to disappointing mission names. So Crash Landing is a really, really nice mission. It can look kind of fillery in gameplay, but in story, I really like it. So, it seems Isabella was once known as Lutaria in Days of Ruin and Lutia in Dark Conflict. And Lutia is interesting because there is a kind of flower that's called the Ibicella Lutia. So, I guess, uh, I guess Calder and Will both came up with a flowery name in their respective versions. And the reason I know what an Ibicilla Lutia is, is because there is a weapon in a Fire Emblem ROM hack that is named after it. It's a really annoying weapon, too. But anyways, now we need to get inside the Great Owl somehow. And Cyrus is going to give us a little bit of a hand with it. Because you know, he, uh, you know, he just doesn't think Calder is, uh, that great a guy. <laughs> It's difficult to, for him to explain because I don't think he has a full understanding of humanity. I don't think humanity has a full understanding of humanity. But, um, th they both kind of know what they're doing. So, Calder wanted to transplant his mind into a younger body. You know, <laughs> I was going to save the Kingdom Hearts references, but the fact that Calder and the clones all have gold eyes kind of reminded me of, like, Organization 13 from uh, Kingdom Hearts. And if you don't know anything about Kingdom Hearts, then you, you don't need to, and it's probably for the best that you don't. But, <laughs> they just, they, it, it's just kind of a similar thing that the villain of Kingdom Hearts was trying to do for a little while. So it's funny that the concept is kind of similar. And of course the morphs in Fire Emblem 7, they had gold eyes as well, so... It's like gold eyes are kind of a sign of evil or something. Beware the gold eyes. Golden eye. <laughs> now I'm thinking about James Bond movies. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. So yes, computer hacking stuff is how we're getting on the Great Owl. That's what you need to take away. Oh, and hey, look who's, look who's along for the ride. She just kind of snuck up behind us with all of her tanks and stuff. Oh, just, you know, hanging around in a plane hangar. In a plane hangar. <laughs> the jokes are writing themselves. I'm, I should be paying attention. Yeah, she brought units. Somehow she managed to sneak rockets and tanks and all of that good stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, and Will doesn't give the orders, so, yeah, you're playing as Lynn for this mission as well. He's still, in Dark Conflict, Ed is still calling her First Lieutenant Lynn. Like, you don't need to use her title anymore. I don't know why Tabitha bothers talking to Isabella. Life on a plane. Well, it's a very plain existence. <laughs> okay, that's enough puns. Um, uh, <laughs> that's enough. Well, you're both clones of Calder, Tabitha.
Wow, all this talk about copies, it, it's making me think of Kingdom Hearts again. Oh my goodness, this is like... Ugh. Oh. <sighs> oh, interesting how, like, if you use their, um, names in Dark Conflict, they all start with the letter L. Which might be interesting because I know in the Japanese language they don't really have an L sound in their alphabet, so that causes a lot of weird stuff when you, uh, when you try to say an L word in Japanese, like, you more or less have to put an R in its place, and this is all language stuff. I'm not a super expert on language. You know, she's saying all this, and yet Isabella, I haven't mentioned this, she's actually statistically way stronger than everybody else in the entire game except for Calder himself. Like, I think... I think... If I remember exactly right, and I don't remember exactly right, but I think the PvP crowd, they kind of had to put in this gentleman's agreement to not use Isabella because she was just that powerful. Yes, more Penny! Penny's gonna control the plane. This doesn't... Now you know why the mission is called Crash Landing. Okay, maybe the reason they don't, didn't go with that for a mission name in um, Dark Conflict is because they didn't want to spoil what's going to happen. Because you see the name Crash Landing and you instantly think the plane's gonna crash. <laughs> she has to ask Mr. Bear in Days of Ruin. You can see that she only talks to the bear in um, Days of Ruin. <laughs> and he also hates Tabitha. <laughs> this this makes so, for so much more fun dialogue. So anyways, Mr. Bear is along for the ride. He should get in the camera. Here we go. This side is better. Oh yeah, how long has Isabella been wearing those clothes, by the way? Because she's had them for the entire game. Like, they never show the characters changing clothes. But yeah. And now for the other best character in the game, this one soldier right here. <laughs> uh, and they're switching the plane to autopilot. Oh, good gravy, they have tanks! <laughs> Mr. Bear, you big liar! <laughs> I think you like it better. Oh, sweet corn casserole, they have freaking rockets! Uh. Yeah, and, and in Dark Conflict, the agent is just... I don't even know what the agent is saying. It's just, like, techno babble. It's rather unfortunate. Anyways, it's battle time! Now, this battle is interesting because it takes place inside the Great Owl. So they've actually got a custom backdrop here. It's just, like, one static image with... Um, you, you can actually turn on grid lines in this game, but... Like, there's no, uh, there's no tiles or anything, but unfortunately it means that the entire map is basically just roads with a couple of pipelines. Like, that's basically what all of this is. Like, I'll show you. While snuggling Mr. Bear, I will show you that this tile is off-limits. That's what it says in both versions. So you can't just, you, you can't go on it. And your units are also scattered about at the beginning as well. And, uh... There's actually reinforcements in this map as well. So that's actually a first for like the whole franchise, I think. There have been missions where reinforcements show up, but it's basically like at the start of the map or not really anything big. But let's look at the tactics before we... Uh... Oh, hey, Cyrus is going to do it this time. 
So, how did he get on the plane? He's kind of, um... Like, shouldn't he not be on the plane? Yeah. That's what they're asking here. And then the best thing happens. Now, why is there a war room inside a plane? William, please, you must not ask such questions. Why not? The war room is a place of strategy. We would do well not to get bogged down in details. <laughs> Uh, and here's Lynn, too! And Tabitha! Wow, they're just all here! In the war room, things are not quite as strict as they are in the rest of the I think this is the best war room yet. But I kind of wish Penny were here. So, strategy. Yes, another important point to this mission is that there are no cities, no factories, no airports, nothing. You, uh, you just, you're just working with what you got. And uh, any damage is permanent, because you're not going to get your health back. Darn shame Brenner and his healing powers aren't here. What's unfortunate, though, is that... Um, both sides do not have a CO unit deployed, and without an HQ or a factory, you cannot deploy a CO unit. So, this is the third Penny mission in the game, and Penny is not able to use her powers, Lynn isn't able to use her powers, it's just another... Like, the CO meters are there, but they're not going to be used for anything. How am I supposed to CO anybody, especially with no money? I have 5,000 G, and there's no cities to repair anything on. It's so strange. Mr. Bear doesn't like this very much. Alright, so let's get going. Basically, you need to start by damaging as many units as possible, so we're just going to... I don't want to make that move quite yet. First, you want to start with the Indirects, because they can't move. Go ahead and blow you up. And this rocket, it can hit, it can hit a number of units, but I think, uh, the artillery, or the, the artillery is not that much of a threat. Let's go for the war tank. No need to finish it off, let's hit the mech. And this anti-air can come all the way over here and destroy this. Leaving this medium tank free to go over here. Um... War Tank is probably just going to attack the other War Tank because it's important to get them out of the way as soon as possible. And... This medium tank can destroy this tank, or at least damage it. That leaves the that leaves this War Tank free to... I've misclicked. How nice. Uh, that's not good. <laughs> Mr. Bear made me misclick. Well, I'm sure it's not going to be that big a deal. Just get rid of that. Levels are also important. This is actually a mission where levels are kind of important. So, I will just, do, just attack the rocket with a tank, and the, the tanks are more threatening, so I'll weaken them first. You also want to keep this APC alive, because... Uh, some of your units might run out of ammo. It's important to pay attention to that. Okay, so I've already got deviations, which is not good because there's actually a lot of dialogue here. Alright, so the medium tank decided to go for the war tank, so that's at least relatively safe. The recons are actually being annoying because you can see that they're actually able to damage the rockets and there's not a lot to stop them. Right, so this is already kind of... Yeah, crash landing is a very appropriate name for this mission. Yeah, go ahead and blow that up. Can this rocket hit the war tank? No. Yeah, I have to... 
I have to use mouse controls, so Mr. Bear might have to take a back seat for this one, unless I... What am I doing with this bear anyways? But he wanted to be in the playthrough so bad! Alright, this is fine, I think. He's nice and soft. Still kind of have to control two things at once. Because, see, this is one of those weird missions where there's going to be dialogue on ev every time the reinforcements show up. And I actually want to see what those reinforcements say in both versions. So that's everybody in Days of Ruin moved. At least one of them will be easier than the other so I can concentrate better. That was probably not a good play in Dark Conflict. Very unfortunate what happened to the rocket over here. So that should hopefully not hurt me too bad. Oh, hey. The mech actually did something. Uh, oh, dialogue. Okay, off to, off to hold off. There we go. So, in Dark Conflict, they actually specify the number of additional units. Which is actually pretty important uh, info to have. Uh, so, where was I? Destroy you, and you. The reinforcements do not come in until the last unit is destroyed. So, is that the last unit? Um, aside from this anti-tank, it is. So... You might want to take a turn to get everybody together and then just like end your turn so that you're ready for the reinforcements when they arrive. I hope I remembered what kind of units come out of each side. Meanwhile, over here... Everyone closer. some ammo for this, I do. And over here... Well, those anti-tanks are super defensive. What happens if you're like, oh! Okay. Yep, those are the reinforcements. So on the left side you have on the right side you have rockets and I was just about to say I was wondering what would happen if one of your units was sitting on top of where the enemy reinforcement is you cannot block the spawns this is not fire emblem so I was lucky in that the rockets were on the right side which is where I had most of my units so these are much much easier to deal with we can lower their HP way before they're able to actually do anything to our units And it's also nice that their levels obviously don't go away. Now over here we unfortunately have three tanks, so that's a uh, goodbye to that anti-air. This is looking more and more like a dual strike dual screen map every every turn. <laughs> Okay, you're gone. 
you are gone. And you're gone. Oh, jeez, more dialogue. They want more units. They want more units like Mr. Bear wants more food. <laughs> and by food, I mean enemy units to eat. Uh, at least with these, I can kind of like make a blockade here. I've only got a 5 HP artillery, but that's decently powerful. And they wouldn't dare attack an anti-tank, I think. That's all I can do on this side. I think I'll just... On this map, I will just wait for the enemy to get closer. Only one tank left over there. I definitely need to get the rig over here. This is why the rig is important, because you can see that, that I'm getting a lot of low ammo warnings. Probably should not have just ended turn, I probably needed to make a few more moves. Now, I'm actually, one thing I'm curious about, I know now what happens if you are trying to block an enemy reinforcement, but what I don't know is if the enemy suicides a unit on your on their turn, and that triggers the reinforcements, what happens? Are they able to move? Uh, is it like an ambush spawn? I don't actually know. So someone will probably experiment with that and get back to me on it. Okay, that's wave two completed. And unfortunately, like, this is almost an ambush spawn because the rockets, I have no way to stop them from destroying this medium tank now. Of course, I could just rush in there and try to damage them a little bit. In fact, I can at least get rid of one of them. And on the right side, it's tanks. Luckily, I know how to deal with those plenty. As you can see, I'm wearing down here, so uh, victory is not guaranteed. Yeah, at this point, a 2 HP war tank isn't really going to do a whole lot, so I have to join. Oh, that was lucky. One less hit they're able to pull. So yes, that misclick was actually very um, problematic, I, I gotta say. Certainly was. We can at least trap the unit so that it can't go anywhere. Oh, it's turn seven up here. That's uh, weird. So I'm going to complete turn 7 down in Dark Conflict Land first. Oh, okay, never mind. It went for the anti-tank, which is really weird. The artillery was right there. <laughs> you can see that Days of Ruins IDS agent is way more freaked out about the situation. More! Just say more and you'll get more. More units for Daddy's little girl. Uh, 
Okay, now to... Gotta really think about this now. There's one more wave of reinforcements. This is a very odd mission, I gotta say. Okay. Keep it going. I don't know if I can get through the last wave with the, these units up here. But we'll see. Yeah, a CO unit actually would have been really helpful. So I really think they should have... Oops, wrong unit. They really should have, like, pre-deployed a CO unit or something, because that would have been way helpful for making this not as uh, annoying to deal with. Uh. Someday someone's going to ask me, Ephraim, why did you decide to play two games of Advanced Wars at the same time? And I'm just going to say, well, I don't know. At least I'm getting a lot of veteran units, and, uh... <laughs> that's, that's just the perfect line, I gotta say. And Lin's line in Dark Conflict is probably not as funny, but it works. It works, too. Alright, so they decided to spawn more rockets right on top of us. This entire wave is nothing but rockets, so at least that's something I know how to deal with. To a certain extent. Like, you could... It's totally possible to spawn camp them by just parking your units where they appear. And I think I'm good in Dark Conflict, but the question is... Is Days of Ruin going to be able to handle the rest of the rockets? And will the score be any good? Okay. That medium tank is going to do at least a little bit of damage. And with a veteran tank, like max level tank, I'm actually able to do quite a good amount of damage. Oh, I, I, I completely forgot there were units over here, though. Oh, that's not good. Get him out of there! Yeah, I think they'll be okay. I'm just gonna let these rockets get closer in Dark Conflict. And now we just have the one rocket left up here. A bit tricky to see the enemy ranges when you don't have grid lines on a map like this. Alright, keep waiting for them to get closer. And balls to the wall. That's the phrase, isn't it? Alright, I think I think it's good now. Definitely very good. Oh, I could have just one-shot that rocket. That's actually bad for the power score. I actually looked up how, how power score works in this game. You want to get, um, you want to destroy as many units as possible with as few attacks as possible. That's what it's based on now. Come on, just one more. So yes, a relatively easy-ish mission, kind of fillery, but it has some fun dialogue in it. So that's all of them. And unfortunately, that's the last mission with... Those were both S ranks. How nice. Wow, how was technique so high? Well, I guess I didn't technically lose as many units... They didn't get KO'd, I guess that's the idea, but whatever. 
See, my rankings in this game are often very surprising just because the scoring system is very lenient. Um, yeah, we're in trouble. I don't think we're going to reach the airfield. Mr. Bear doesn't want to land here. Mr. Bear hates you here. Wow, okay. I officially don't like Dark Conflict's take on Penny. She's so much less psycho. <sighs> And this is another scene that I think is going to be, like, you could prefer one version or the other, because in Days of Ruin, I remember that Will is a, a lot more desperate, because this, this is kind of a sensitive situation, but in Dark Conflict, Ed is a lot more emotional, because, well, this is kind of supposed to be an emotional scene, but the plane is about to crash. <laughs> All caps, Days of Ruin is also um, liberal with all caps. Also, traveled in Dark Conflict here, spelled with two L's. I, if that's a UK spelling thing, then, you know, just ignore me, but that looks weird to this American mind. You have meaning and strength and beauty and I, I... Come on, say it. Say it, Will. Yes, I knew it. I mean, I hoped you would say that, but part of me really knew and... <laughs> Yeah, that got a little bit awkward, too. Yeah, this worked way better in Days of Ruin at the end of the day, I think. Of course, there's still a matter of the plane and how do we land. What is this strange girl saying? Mr. Bear doesn't understand. Screw this, I'm getting a parachute. <laughs> this is supposed to be a tense scene, so I don't know if like inserting lines like that is uh, really all that important, but it is funny. So this is Advanced Wars, so I think if it's funny, you should do it. And then she seems to snap, but only in Days of Ruin. I mean, if she hadn't snapped already, you know. Isn't anyone else worried about this? Wait, this isn't a parachute, it's a sleeping bag. <laughs> ah, crap. <laughs> I hope... I hope... 
you know, whatever happens in the remaining missions, I hope that IDS agent survives. Hey, Penny's unlocked! How nice. We get to play as Mr. Bear now, but only in multiplayer, unfortunately. And the sad thing is, I have to unfortunately announce that is the last Penny mission. So I think Mr. Bear is going to need to take a breather because he's kind of making it hard to stay in the camera. Sorry, Mr. Bear, that was your last mission, but I'll bring you back for a future video, I promise. <sighs> Please upvote this video if you think Mr. Bear should come back more often. I personally do. It's nice to have somebody to call up with. <clears throat> So next up is Mission 25, and since the game is not over, we can uh, basically uh, deduce that the Great Owl did not in fact crash, but two more missions left, and one of them is unfortunately broken. Not this one, the final mission is broken, and that's going to be a fun little treat, so I uh, don't know if I'm going to put it in the same video as this one. This, this mission was kind of short, but uh, see you later for that, everybody.